Step one, we're going to set up our project and configure it. So what I'm going to be using NPX and we're going to use the CRA, Create React App. And I'm going to call the project Hello Jest Enzym. We're going to wait for the libraries and the installation to be completed. It's going to create a project. I'm putting it on my desktop, but you can put it anywhere you want. Once the installation is complete, just change the directory into the project. We want to install Enzym. So the enzyme, we wanna, we're going to install the version 16 adapter because I'm using version 16. So just do npm i for install enzyme adapter react 16. And then we're going to also install the react test renderer and we're going to save it for a dev. So we're going to have our JSON file modified with the libraries we installed. We're using the Jets snapshot for be, to test the features to automatically save a copy of our JSON tree to a file and then check our test that it hasn't changed. So that way we can run the test quicker and we can see if there's any change that happened to our, in our libraries. So that's what we need the test renderer. What we're going to be doing is also we're going to install the enzyme to JSON. The enzyme to JSON, what it's going to do, it's going to make our life easier because we can simplify our code. Basically what we're doing is we're going to install the enzyme to JSON. And then once all those libraries are completed, we're going to create a directory called component. And then we're going to create a custom component called, called calculator and a calculator CSS. And that's going to be our custom component for our calculator we're going to be using. So we're going to be using the Mac OS building calculator as the graphic. And then we're going to map that graphic each key so it's going to be clickable. So I'm going to be using a library called React Image Mapper. So install that as well. That way we can map our image. Once all the installation is complete, we completed our step one. For step two, we're going to be creating our calculator custom component. The code level, what I'm going to be doing is I'm creating a calculator custom component. What I've done really is I took a screenshot of the macOS calculator as my graphic and then I use an online tool to take the image and turn it into a clickable map area. So you can click each button on the calculator. I'm setting a state to include my output. Take two numbers and I'll be working with an operator. To take a look at the code, I'm using the curl command here to download the two files from the GitHub repository. One file is going to be the calculator.js, the second one is going to be the calculator.css. If you start and look at the JSX side, I've added the div with my Twitter handler. Now it may look like a shameless self-promoting, but beside that, I wanted to include that so I can show you some testing. The same with the bun. We have a bun there that allow you to start over and we have some properties that we're passing on. The CSS level, just setting the output. The output is the result that we're going to see out of operating two numbers. And if you look again at the calculator.js, few methods there. First of all, I have two constant parameters. One is the URL and one is the map. I set them up as export constant so we can use them for our testing. Those are the map area and the URL where the image of the calculator is. And then we also have the state was set up. There's a method that we can start over that reset our two numbers and our output and our operator. And then we have a method that will allow us to calculate two numbers. If you multiply, you divide, whatever operation you do on the two numbers is going to be done on that method. Once you click the button, we want to handle them. So there's a switch there that handles the different cases on when you click the different map area on the calculator. We need the calculator and we need the output images. You can get those using the call command from the GitHub repository. So download them and put them in the public folder. Those are already mapped in our CSS file. So our CSS file is already mapped to the output and calculator JS file is already mapping into the calculator image. Once you completed and download those, the only thing we have left to do in order to run our app and see it's running is we need to update our app.js file. So go into source slash app.js file and just change the code so it will include our calculator custom component. And also we're going to be passing two props. We're going to be passing the component title. We're going to call it online calculator and a version. And once we've done that, that's it. Type in in terminal npm start and we have a basic calculator. Notice that I didn't map all the calculator keys and function, just the basic, so we can do some
for the step three, the last step, we're going to be testing our code. The first thing we need to do is we need to set up our environment, our testing environment. You open up setuptest.js, use the configure from the enzyme project, configure using the adapter we downloaded. We're going to do configure and then we set the adapter and that will set our testing environment. Once that's done, the next step is we want to include the snapshot serializers that we downloaded in our package.json. That will simplify our code so we can create our snapshot easier. Now, notice that we didn't have to install Jest because that came out of the box. Also notice that the enzyme, we're using the adapter with the version 16, but if that change and you know, there's a new version of React, you're going to have to make changes and change the adapter as well. Then once we've done that, the next step is open source slash app that test.js. This is our test here to make sure that the component is actually included in our app. So the first test we're going to do is check to make sure that our component is included in the app. What we're going to do is we're going to import the shallow from the enzyme project and we're going to import our calculator component and then we're going to test. We want to see that the calculator was rendered. So we're going to create a constant variable. We're going to call it wrapper that that's going to use the shallow with our component and then we're going to call our custom component calculator and we're going to check if the wrapper has that calculator inside and if it exists. So if it exists inside of our app, then that will pass the test. Just to see the first test that we've done running, it's already plugged into our project because we use the template project. So it's already equipped with the test script. So to handle everything, so all we have to do is just type in in command line npm run test and then we'll see you know the test running when we're running the test we want to watch for usage do the run all test take a look here we got one failed test now why did we get a failed test it expected the true right it expected our calculator to be added to our app the object is not equal now why is it not equal if you go back to app.js quality is not it's expect true and it was false why is that happening? If you take a look back at the app that test that js, take a look. My app is small letter a, so it really did not import the app component. So it was creating the wrapper with the shallow API without including the right component. Now that I done save, the live update automatically run the test again and now it's passed. I made a typo and my test fail. Once I fix my typo, it's running correctly. In order to test inside of a component, the first thing is we need to create a test file. Jest is going to look for files in different location. For example, it's going to look for a JS file inside of underscore underscore test underscore underscore folders, or it's going to look for files that has the dot test dot JS suffix, or it's going to look for files that has the dot spec dot JS suffix. What we're going to be doing is let's create a file. We're going to call it calculator spec.js but again you could have called calculator.test.js it's up to you i like to use the specs because it's the norm in other framework like angular after you create that file the next thing we want to do is we want to import the api that we need we're going to be using two apis out of the three we're going to use the shallow and mouth so import those from enzyme and also we need our calculator component because we're going to be using it to do the testing. The first test we're going to do is we're going to do a test suite of our snapshot. What is a test suite, right? A test suite, it creates a block that group together a few tests. Now we can list all the tests we want inside of our test suite. In our test suite, I'm only going to set up one test this time. What we want to do is we want to set our snapshot, but we can include other snapshots. For example, if you had a helper utilities, you can include anything inside of here. So it's going to create different snapshots. In the code, I'm using the it, but you can, again, you can use test. I'll show it to you later. Creating a wrapper, just like we did before. We're wrapping our component in the shallow API of the enzyme. And then we write our test statement. We expect the wrapper to match our snapshot. So basically it's going to be live updating our test. And if we change our front-end code, it's going to break the snapshot. 
Now, once you hit the save, you can see that it's generating our snapshot. We tested a test suite and it created us a snapshot folder, which inside holds a copy of our current snapshot. If we go and we change our code, it's going to fill the test. So if we go, for example, and in our component, we just make a change. Let's say change the Twitter name, right? And you do save, you see it fills, the snapshot fill, and it asks us to update the snapshot. I don't want that change, so I reverted that, but if you wanted that change, you can just update the snapshot. What else can we test? We can test component prop. So to test our component prop on our title that we're passing from the main entry point, app.js, is similar to our previous test. What we do is we set the wrapper and we check the h1 text against the data we injected into our code. How do we do that? If we use the test and we create the wrapper using the shallow and calculator component, we can pass our properties, component title and the version into our component. And then we can use the wrapper to find the H1 title and the text property in our title, and then compare our title to our title and the version that we set in our component. Once we did that, take a look, it's giving us fail result. Why did it fail? If we look back at our calculator JS, it looks like we're using the online calculator title with the version. The H1 title is created with the title and the version, but we also have the number symbol, and I did not include the number symbol. Now, if I go back to my test and I include the number symbol, then it's going to and I do save, then it's going to pass the test. What else can we test? We can test, for example, for our interactive button. For an interactive component, we can use the simulate to simulate the user gesture clicking around our app. We can compare the results and the output. We set in our app a clear button, and the clear button should clear the output. So how do we create that test? Create the wrapper, and we check the output div to see that when we start it, it should be zero because we're just starting our app. Once we simulate the click of the clear, we expect our outputs to be zero again. Really, the value didn't change, but we're just testing this. If we hand value in the output and we hit the clear, we expect it to be zero. So we can create different, different tests of a user clicking around our app and choosing different buttons and then clearing the results to make sure that the clear button really worked correctly. Another test that we can do is we can uh, do testing of functions directly. We use the instance times that we would need to test functions directly. For example, side the uh, calculator JS. I created a method called calculate two numbers that it takes the two numbers and it runs the different operations against them. So we can test all the different operations. So we can create a test suite and include all those different operations that we're running on our numbers. For example, we can test the add and we can test the multiply. How do we do that? To test the add, we create a wrapper using the shallow API with the calculator component and then we do wrapper that instance that gives us access to the methods. Now we can call the expect, use the instance with our method name, which is calculate two numbers, and we can pass the parameters that is expect. So if we pass for the first number one, for the second number two, and we use the operator of plus, we're going to get a result of three. And the same thing if we're using the multiply. So if we use two for the first number and two for the second number, two multiply two, equal four. So we want to test that and save that and see that our method works correctly. So we can go ahead and really create a test suite and test every single scenario to make sure that all of our operators are working correctly. And that instant property on the wrapper is really powerful because we can access all of our methods in our calculator JS component. We can also testing interactive bun and our state. Now, how do we do that? We can, again, we can call the wrapper that instant, and then we can call our clicked, which is the method that we created for the click and pass our result. So if I call the click method with the number one, I expect my state, my output to change to also one. So once the user click the one button, I expect my output, our state, to change to one as well. We can also do testing for a custom component. We can do that with the mount. If you look at the calculator JS component, 
you saw that we created a custom component using the React image mapper. In order to create the test, what we need to do is first we're going to need the Just Canvas mock because if we don't install the Just Canvas mock, we're going to get errors because it won't be able to read all the properties inside of our canvas. After we install that, we need to include it in our test. Now, normally I would put that code at the top. I'm just putting it here so it's easy to read, you know, because I'm showing you how to do it. But, you know, obviously you would move it to the top of the document. And what we're going to be testing here is we want to see that when the user is clicking on the property, meaning every area in our image that it's being clicked, it needs to produce a cursor pointer, meaning that it's really a clickable image. How do we do that? We create a wrapper, but this time instead of using the shallow, we're using the mount. It's going to give us just more accessibility to more properties. Then we're going to pass in our image mapper the URL and the map. I said the URL and the map, I exported those constants so we can use it in our tests here. So we set our image mapper with the source and the map. And then if we set our style to find our map and get the property style, we expect the style to match the cursor pointer. And that's how we know really that our image is mapped with areas that are able to be clickable. And save it and we can see that it passed the test. One important thing to remember with the mount is you need to unmount because the mount and zim API taxing a lot using the mount and the test may be affected if we don't unmount so the next time we test we may have memory leaks or changes that we made from a previous test so always remember to do wrapper unmount at the end last thing we're going to be testing is we can do testing using the spy so once our app really grow and we may need to interact with asynchronous data just really has a built-in functionality to handle mock data and functions. To do that, I'm just going to put a simple test. I'm not going to create all the mockups and everything. What I'm just going to do, I'm going to use the spy on property on the gist, and I'm going to spy on the start over button. And what I expect is if I simulate the click, I expect my output to be zero. Save that and see that all the results got saved correctly and we passed our test.